welcome again to another video of Pag-aaral and in today's lesson, we're going to discuss cell membrane and the transport mechanisms. So these are the things that you must know and let's start. <laughs> okay, sobrang bilis, pero it's mahaba kasi. Yeah, start na tayo. So the cell membrane is basically the edge of life or the boundary that separates the living cell from its surroundings. So it controls what goes in and out of the cell. So we already learned about this, di ba? We somehow learned about this. Parang pinigyan natin siya ng uh, parang overview lang. So the cell membrane is said to be semi-permeable. So it means that it allows some substances to cross it more easily than others and the iba hindi talaga nakakapasok. And your oh my gosh, I'm sorry. The cell membrane is comprised of many things like it is comprised comprised of proteins, carbohydrates, cholesterol, uh and a lot of lipids. So it could be glycolipid, phospholipid, and the ECM, of course, this ECM. So we, you know about the model of fluid mosaic model. That apparently, uh, when we were in high school, you know, palagi siya sabi nila that the cell membrane has this fluid mosaic model. Na pero before that, we have an earlier model, and we call that the sandwich model. So what is a sandwich model? Uh, anyway, pala it is proposed by Davidson and Danielli in 1935. So they said that. Uh, the membrane is composed of phospholipid bilayer and um, it is uh, at the layer or at the top of it and dun dun sa baba, it is composed of protein. But scientists found it, uh, find it very problematic because first is uh, varying chemical composition of a membrane. So each organism or parang hindi kasi para parehas yung composition ng isang membrane. So we can't really say na ito lang yung meron within a membrane. Second is uh, proteins are actually amphiphatic. So it means that they have hydrophobic, hydrophobic, hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts. So if it it parang if ganito yung case nun, ibig sabihin um there are parts ng cell or specifically the hydrophobic parts of the protein will be exposed doon sa area na merong water. So, hindi din yun pwede. That's why nag-come up sila with this model which is yung ginagamit natin today, fluid mosaic model. So, sa fluid mosaic model, they said that it is composed of phospholipid bilayer with hydrophobic regions of proteins and hydrophilic regions of proteins. And they uh, supported it by the freeze fracture method, which revealed the structure of the membrane's interior. So basically, ang nangyari sa ang, ang method na to, or this method uh, enables the scientists to see what does the inside of the cytoplasmic layer looks like and inside of the extracellular layer. So, ang nangyari kasi dun, so freeze fracture is it splits a membrane along the middle part of the bilayer somewhat like para kayo nagbubukas ng sandwich na peanut butter sandwich. So ganun yung ginawa nila and then afterwards um in observe nila yon under the microscope. So ito yung nakita nila and under the microscope merong mga cobblestones or parang ganun-ganun. As you can see yung texture niya diba parang hindi siya smooth. So yun daw yung proteins and inside of extracellular layer naman it is somewhat uh, parang more uh, smooth kasi nga parang pag tinanggal mo yung sandwich di ba into two parang dun yung iba na mga granules ng peanut ganun tapos yung isa naman syempre since andun na nga yung mga peanut it will wala na syang peanut so parang it looks smoother katulad ng ganito so this is a cytoplasmic layer Kaya ganyan yung itsura niya, may proteins, and this is the extracellular layer. Now, let's discuss the structure of the phospholipids. Phospholipid, uh, specifically yung meron pala tayo sa membrane, bilayer, dalawa. So, phospholipid bilayer, and they are amphipathic katulad ng proteins. So, ibig sabihin, they have hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. So, this is the hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. And that's the reason why ganyan yung itsura niya. Ganyan yung parang structure ng cell membrane. So, tinatago or dito sa middle part, nandito sa gitna yung hydrophobic kasi nga high niya ng water and then the hydrophilic head. Uh, nandito sila sa labas, doon sa inside and outside of the cell. 
Kasi nga, it's okay for them to be in contact with water. So, yeah, another. <laughs> so, ito yung itsura ng phospholipid. If we wanted to, if we want to, like, look at it in a molecular level, so, meron siyang chains ng uh, hydrocarbon. So, parang hydrogen and carbon, yan, combination. So, this part, the tail is basically the fatty acid, and then with glycerol, and then phosphate and choline. So, this comprises the head. And yun din yung parang reason why the fatty acids here ay hydrophobic or ayaw nila ng water. And then this makes the hydro, yung phosphate ito, this makes the hydro, uh, this makes the head hydrophilic. Okay. So what do, or what is the importance of the fluid mosaic model. So, let's try to break it down. So, fluid. Bakit tinawag na fluid yung cell membrane? So, uh, before we uh, go on to that, fluid or membrane fluidity is a measure of the extent to which something is fluid. <laughs> oh, diba? Parang ano, dinefine ko lang din with its spirit. Pero yeah, it makes it not like parang super firm na the wall, like a cell wall, but fluid, like it moves. Hindi naman this way, pero it moves. Okay? It's fluid. So there are factors that constitutes to the fluidity of a membrane. First is the mosaic characteristic of the membrane helps the plasma membrane remain fluid. So as you can see here, maraming uh, yun na, sinabi ko kanina, maraming mga bagay yung nagko constitutes the on sa uh, sa membrane. So it could be uh, uh, we could find the integral proteins, the lipids, and those lipids, those integral proteins, the carbohydrates, they are not really attached, like firm, na attached, no? They are loosely attached molecules. Well, they are attached, but really, really not firm. So, loosely attached, kasi nga, it enables them to move from one place to another. Hindi naman sobrang dramatic yung movement, but for example, here, sa second picture, nagkakaroon sila ng lateral movement. So, one phospholipid can uh, move from this place to another and also meron din nangyayaring flip-flopping across the membrane but it is uh, rare lang so it's the importance of parang of this loosely attached molecule so since um, hindi nga siya parang sobrang uh, sobrang solid sobrang strict like a wall ganyan ang nangyayari is um, since fluid siya mas madaling makakapag uh, makakapasok at makakalive mas manali movement in and out of the cell. Okay? Next is the nature of phospholipid. So, that constitutes then to the fluidity of the cell. So, aside from it is composed of many things, it will, there are many proteins, lipids, uh, many biological molecules, uh, the nature of the phospholipids also constitutes to the fluidity of the membrane. Kasi, uh, the phospholipid as uh, nakita nyo kanina ang itsura niya is like this meron siyang tail and then one one part of it is nakakink or parang nakaganon or nakabend so they are actually unsaturated hydrocarbon tails and that's what makes your membrane fluid but if you have a saturated hydrocarbon tails it will make your uh, membrane viscous or parang uh, solid. So, parang mas mahirap yung pag-transport ng, ng molecules or ng substances in and out of the cell. So, uh, another factor is the cholesterol. So, anong ginagawa ng cholesterol? So, cholesterol receives changes by limiting fluidity at high temperature and hinder close packing at low temperature. So, you would need to understand na since the, um, the cell membrane is since the cell membrane is fluid, diba? it is parang, parang uh, fluid talaga siya. Pero pag na-expose siya sa higher temperature, it tends to become more fluid. So parang mas magiging, mas lalayo siya sa isa't isa. And what, uh, what, what prevents that from, what prevents it from happening is the cholesterol. So it binds your, your, um, 
your phospholipids together para hindi sila maghiwahiwalay. And aside from that, pag may low temperature din daw, ang mangyayari kasi kung si pag may low temperature, magiging saturated yung hydrocarbon tails nyo. So, mag- magiging parang closely back together sila. Pero with the presence of cholesterol, where is my, uh, with the presence of cholesterol here, so hindi sila pwedeng maging uh, back together. Hindi sila maging hindi sila pwede maging solid-like kasi mayroong space here that uh, inoccupy ng cholesterol. So, ganun ka-important yung cholesterol na iniintig natin. Pero, yeah, it's bad. It's bad pa rin if you have a lot of cholesterol. Dapat enough lang para magamit ng cell memory. Okay? So, because of these kinks then eto, eto nakikita nyo, or the bending, it, uh, parang, it prevents the close packing of the phospholipid during low pumple, low temperature and syempre may ding adaptations yung mga bacteria uh, dun sa uh, structure ng cell membrane nila kasi nga di ba uh, remember na pag mataas yung yung mataas yung temperature mas nagiging fluid yung membrane pero syempre may mga bacteria pa rin na can thrive in a in extremes, like for example, in a hot spring. So, syempre, meron silang unusual lipid. And that same goes with the winter wheat. So, during winter, they have unsaturated phospholipids. Na kahit na malamig, they still have that unsaturated phospholipid. Kasi nga, the phospholipid itself, ang iturin niya, is meron siya mga bending or the kinks that prevents it from closing or f- prevents it from being closed together or closed packing. Okay? Next is the integral proteins and the peripheral proteins. So, ito naman yung uh, mosaic aspect. Kanina kasi, di ba, fluid na discuss na natin ano yung mga factors why it is called fluid. Now, we discuss natin kung bakit siya tinawag na mosaic. So, it is a combination of a lot of um, molecules, a lot of biomolecules, uh, uh, macromolecules so that is clustered together in groups embedded in the fluid matrix of the lipid by a layer so yeah one type of that yeah is the protein so it is divided into two integral proteins and peripheral proteins so when we say integral proteins they are embedded in the membrane and determined by free structure so uh, one example of integral protein is the transmembrane uh, protein with hydrophilic heads and tails and hydrophobic hydrophobic middle so for peripheral proteins naman they are found uh, on the sides of the cytoplasm or extracellular or cytoplasmic sides of the membrane and they are not embedded held in place by the cytoskeleton or ECM and they generally just provide stronger framework so this is an example of a transmembrane protein. So ganto yung itsura niya. So as you can see, at the uh, extracellular side, nandun yung N terminus, and sa cytoplasmic side, nandun yung C terminus. And kanina, di ba, sinabi natin na it has a hydrophobic interior. So ibig sabihin yung middle part niya, ayaw niya ng water. And yung hydrophilic ends naman, both the tail and the head, they love water. Ta- and because of that, nagkaroon din siya ng parang, kung makikita nyo, magkaiba din yung structure niya. Kasi yung alpha helix, I mean, the, the structure here in the middle is composed of al- alpha helices. So, ganun yung structure niya. So, it's hydrophobic. Pero, kung makikita nyo dito, yung structure naman niya, when it comes in contact with water, dito, it is non-helical or hindi siya helix type. Okay? Yun lang. <laughs> so, these are just some functions of the membrane proteins. First is, we know it's for transport. Second is enzymatic activity. Third is signal transduction. Um, fourth, cell-to-cell recognition, specifically the glycoprotein. And uh, fifth, the intercellular joining. So, it could be a gob junction or tight junction. And uh, lastly, the attachment to the cytoskeleton or the extracellular matrix CCM. So, don't worry, you have that in your module. So, carbohydrates. So, carbohydrates, man, they function for cell-to-cell recognition and is vital for developing organisms. Example of which are the glycolipids and the glycoproteins. Now, what's the difference between your glycolipids and glycoproteins? Glycolipid 
uh, glyco kasi it means na meron siyang sugar. So, sugar plus lipid and then glyco protein sa man sugar plus protein. So, it is um, important specifically for blood transfusion that is specific uh, parang blood transfusions that are type specific. Okay. Next is cholesterol. Again, sabi ko lang kanina, it keeps the membrane from being too fluid and too permeable to some small molecules. And aside from that, it helps the it helps to secure the proteins that are embedded in the membrane. So cholesterol helps to keep the cell membranes of plant cells from freezing solid in very cold temperatures. So, discuss din natin kung paano replenish or paano nagkakaroon ng membrane or ng cell membrane. So, katulad ng sabi natin before, as you can see here, it starts with your ER. So, for example, here sa ER, uh, it is where the protein is being modified. So, it could be added with um, protein, uh, with sugar. So, we call it glycoproteins. So, if ever it has been modified na, so this will be transported to the Golgi apparatus and this Golgi apparatus will further uh, somehow modify it. For example, the protein will be ng lipid, so it will be glycolipid. So once it's done, it will be transported via the vesicle and that will fuse, that vesicle will fuse now to the cell membrane and it will secrete the protein na kailangang ma-release. So as you can see here, the outer layer of the vesicle will be fused to the inner layer. The outer layer of the vesicle, this orange one, will be fused to the inner layer of the cell membrane while the blue one will be uh, parang uh, will be fused or parang masasama siya dito sa outer layer or sa extracellular phase. So that basically uh, or parang yan yung nangyayari I mean, wait lang. So, ganyan yung nangyayari para ma-replenish or para magkaroon ng uh, additional uh, membrane. Doon sa cell membrane. Okay. Okay. Balik ko di tayo dito. So, tapos na tayo sa sa membrane as fluid mosaic. Di ba? Fluid, alam na natin. And mosaic, alam na natin. Now, dito tayo sa selective permeability. So, sabi nila that or parang hindi nila sabi but it's true talaga self membranes are selective so only small molecules are able to cross easily especially the cytocarbons the CO2 the O2 and uh, it could be polar and non-polar and the hydrophobic core prevents passage of ions in large polar molecules kasi uh, hindi niya kaya that's why it's selective, only the small molecules lang. The larger one, it needs the help of other proteins or it needs energy to be transported in and out of the cell. Now, let's go to the cellular transport mechanism. Yay! So, for the transport, uh, for the first transport, we're going to discuss the passive transport. So, it doesn't need energy. That's why it's passive. It needs energy. And uh, basically, uh, basically, when we say passive transport, that is diffusion. So diffusion is just the uh, down concentration equation wherein from high concentration, the molecules or the substances will move to a lower concentration. So for example, the hydrocarbon CO2, O2, and H2O. So, he, I have here a schematic diagram wherein, as you can see, for example, let's say these are the molecules of a dye. And then when you parang place it on water, syempre, dito sa side na to, uh, it will cross the section or parang the molecules will move from a high concentration to lower concentration until it reaches its equilibrium. And that's, uh, that's the same with two solutes. So, for example, you have the solute 1 and then solute 2. So, ganun lang din naman. It will move papunta dito and then the violet ones, they will move papunta to the left side until such time na ma-reach na lang dalawa yung equilibrium. Diba? Easy. That's diffusion. So, another is the osmosis. Osmosis is a special type of diffusion kasi that osmosis is the diffusion of water. So, 
pag mayroong diffusion ng water, automatically, we call that osmosis. So, para maintindihan natin yung osmosis, they uh, have this experiment. So, this is a YouTube. And that YouTube is separated by, let's say, for example, a selectively permeable membrane. And then, this society that though, it has a lower concentration of solute. Let's say that solute is sugar molecule. And then, dito naman, mayroong higher concentration. Shot. So after some time now, if you leave it like that, what will happen is the water from here will move from this side to this side. And then uh, you can see, mas marami siyang water compared dito. So do they have the same concentration now? Yes. So paano natin nasabi yun, eh mas marami na tong water. It's okay kasi mas marami din naman siyang solute. So parang nabalance yun na. And uh, since konti lang naman yung solute and sabi nga di ba, it is separated by selectively permeable membrane, hindi kasi makakapag uh, travel itong molecules nito or itong mga sugar molecules nito, hindi siya makakapag pass through that kasi masyado siya malaki. So, ang nangyayari is yung water lang yung nakakamove. Kaya yung water yung nag-adjust from free, high free water concentration to lower free water concentration. Okay? That's your osmosis. And when we say osmosis then, um, we're also going to talk about the water balance in cells. So to explain the behavior of cell in a solution, we must consider both solute concentration and membrane permeability. So uh, when talking about the water balance, also we're going to parent discuss the tonicity. So that is the ability of the surrounding solution to cause a cell to gain or lose water. So isotonic, it means that uh, the the surrounding or the solution and the inside of the cell has the same concentration. So when we say hypertonic naman, the extracellular has more concentration compared or is more concentrated compared to the uh, contents inside the cell. And hypotonic naman, extracellular is less concentrated. So we can observe that in this parang diagram. How living cells react to changes in the solute concentration of their environment depends on whether or not they have cell wall. And uh, animal cells such as the RBCs will have a cell wall, but the plant cells have cell wall. So, titignan natin yung difference, okay? So, in animal cell, the most uh, ideal solution is the isotonic kasi same lang yung concentration ng H2O or I, same lang yung concentration ng solute sa inside and outside. That's why the movement of water between the membranes is equal. So, wala naman siyang kailangang i, parang i, i, gawin pa. So, it's equal. Kung ano pumapasok, yun lang din yung lumalabas. But in a hypotonic solution, what happens is since the extracellular membrane or extracellular environment here has a lower concentration, or parang it is less concentrated, what will happen is the H2O will move inside of the cell and it will make the cell burst. While in the hypertonic solution naman, since the outside environment has higher concentration, the water will leave out of this cell. So, the water dito sa loob, it will leave out of that and uh, to somehow parang to balance it out. Kaya ang mangyayari, the cell will shrivel. Okay? So, the plant cell naman, ang mangyayari is, in a uh, hypotonic solution, the cell would be normal compared to the animal cell. Kasi hypotonic naman sa cell is maglalize. So, in a uh, isotonic solution naman, if it's normal sa animal cell, ang mangyayari sa plant cell is it will become flaccid or it will um, become droopy. Ganun. So, lastly, in a hypertonic solution, ang mangyayari sa plant cell, it will become plasmolized kasi mawawala na siya ng water. The water will move out of the cell. So, as you can see, ganun pa rin naman yung movement ng water. But it depends upon if that organism meron siyang Kung it's a, it depends upon the organism if it has a cell wall. Okay? Now, let's discuss the facilitated diffusion. So, facilitated diffusion is just a, another type of passive transport. 
aided by protein. So, passive transport, they could be a channel or a carrier protein that helps hydrophilic substances cross. Kasi nga, as uh, you remember, dito sa middle part, it is composed of hydrophobic tail. So, hindi talaga sila makakadaan dyan unless mayroon kang protein na mag, uh, parang mag-guide sa'yo to cross the membrane. Okay? So, that could be nga, sabi ko, channel protein or a carrier protein. Now, anong difference ng channel protein sa carrier protein? So, the channel protein are actually uh, the channel through which molecules or a specific solute can pass. So, para lang siyang channel, dyan siya pwedeng dumaan. And a carrier protein naman is it alternates between two shapes moving a solute across the membrane during the shape change. So, ang nangyayari is na si shape ay parang nag-change yung shape nitong carrier protein para madala niya yung mga molecules sa kailangang madala in and out of the cell. So, aquaporin is a special type of uh, channel protein that is specific for H2O only or for water only. And this glucose transport protein naman, which is a carrier protein, is only for glucose lang. Now, let's go with your active transport. So, when we say active transport, it requires energy. And the proteins transport against, or proteins transport substances against concentration gradient. So, kanina, from high concentration to low, parang pababa. Para ka lang umakit ng, ay pag bumababa ka na hagdan, di ba? Mas madaling bumaba kaysa umakit. Kasi pag bumakit ka, you need energy. So, uh, it is against the gradient. So, one example of that, actually two, the <laughs> sodium potassium pump and the proton pump. So, uh, to pump a solute across a membrane against, against its gradient requires work. So, the cell must expend energy and one way to do it is by electrogenic pump. So, it generates voltage across membrane and one type of electrogenic pump is the sodium potassium pump. So basically what happens is it pumps out night uh, it pump, it pumps out sodium out and potassium into the cell. So it is really important for nerve transmission. So another type or another example is the proton pump. So it pushes the hydrogen ions across the membrane. So that can be uh, observed in mitochondria specifically in the production of ATP. So, what happens is you have this H plus here sa loob ng uh, cell or in the cytoplasm and by the help of the proton pump which is a type of protein and the ATP, it will pump out this H plus papunta sa extracellular fluid. So, another uh, parang another type of protein is a co-transport protein wherein it enables downhill diffusion of one solute to drive uphill transport of another. So, ano do yung sabi doon? Kanina, di ba, natutunan natin sa proton pump na uh, you have here the hydrogen ion that will be pumped by the help of the ATP papunta sa uh, extracellular membrane. And then, this H plus here is saturated na siya ng, um, ng hydrogen ions. It will be used para ma-diffused itong hydrogen ions back pabalik sa cytoplasm. So, um, that is by the help of, for example, ha, for example, that is by the help of the sucrose H plus called transporter. Okay. And now, if we're going to compare the passive and active transport, passive transport basically is just the uh, para movement of of molecules that doesn't need energy and the active transport naman these are the transport that happens across the membrane that needs the aid of ATP or energy so again little or no energy for passive it is from high to low concentration down the concentration region for example the fusion osmosis facilitated the fusion with transport protein for the active transport demand it requires energy such as atp from low to high concentration it is against the region 
treatment, for example, the pumps, the exo, and endocytosis. So when we say uh, endo and cyto, endo and exocytosis, so these are just the uh, transport of uh, transport of large molecules across the plasma membrane. So it requires, or parang this kind of transport requires energy. So we have two types nga, sabi natin kanina, endocytosis and exocytosis. So when we say endocytosis, that is the take-in, that's why it's um, endo. So take-in of macromolecules and form new vesicle. So for example, meron ka dito mga proteins or parang meron ka dito mga molecules that you want to take in. So para siyang uh, magkakaroon ng infold and pag nagkaroon ng infold, parang madudraw dyan yung mga molecules until such time that a uh, vesicle will close and then this will be uh, used by the cell. So, the exocytosis naman, it is where the vesicle fuse with the cell membrane and expel the contents. So, the vesicle is from inside or parang galing siya sa loob ng cell and katulad nung sa endomembrane system, diba? the vesicle will fuse now to the cell membrane and it will release whatever it needs to release. So, mayroon pa tayong two types sa endocytosis. So, that is pinocytosis, so cellular drinking. So, syempre, if you drink, ibig sabihin, what you drink, I mean, when we say drinking, ibig sabihin, parang, it's fluid. So, it, uh, gulps droplets of extracellular fluid with dissolved molecules in two tiny vesicles while the phagocytosis naman is the cellular eating so it takes in larger molecules by packaging it in in a membrane sac called food vacuole that will be later on digested by the lysosome so for the receptor mediated endocytosis naman it is where the process uh, it is a process in which receptors are used for importing materials from extracellular matrix into the cell. For example, you have the receptors, diba? Meron ko receptors dito sa labas na cell membrane mo. So, this specific molecule will bind to the receptor. And once the receptor meron na siyang um, specific molecule na nakabind doon, magkakaroon ka na ng uh, infolding of the uh, parang membrane that will later on, pag na parang nandun na sa loob lahat ng kailangan na specific molecule with the receptor, it will be enclosed and will become a vesicle and that vesicle, i, parang siya yung sport niya na siya pupunta doon sa organ na may kailangan ng specific molecule na yun. And now to sum it up, cellular membranes are fluid mosaics of lipid and proteins and membrane structure results in selective permeability. Passive transport is a diffusion of a substance across a membrane with no energy investment and diffusion is the spontaneous movement of a substance down its concentration gradient and guys just read it. <laughs> read yun na lang yan and yeah. So that's all for the cell membrane and the cell mechanism. I hope you learned something. So bye for now guys. See you in the next video.